Erev Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi, Masechet Moed Katan. We are up to Paragimel Mishnah Zain. Today's Mishnah should be Le'ilun Nishmat, Neria Ben Svetlana, Aran Baev, and Eliyahu Ben Burcha Yisrael of Menuchatam Began Eden, Amen, and Le'abde Ben Chaim Nechaim, but the Refua Shelema of Daniel Shemab Ben Rosa, Vitor Shachul Yisrael. The previous Mishnah discussed the effect of the festivals on the morning periods of Shiva and Shloshim. This Mishnah discusses various laws and customs practiced immediately before and after burial and how they are observed during Cholam Wed. The Mishnah begins and Korin. During Cholam Wed, one may not tear his garments upon a death, below Cholzin, nor bare his shoulder, which we will explain. Then Mablin, nor do we serve the mourner's meal to anyone, Ela Kulav Shelmet, other than the immediate relatives of the deceased. Who have an obligation to mourn, but those who are not obligated may not tear their garments, bear their shoulders, or partake of the mourner's meal. Now, when the Mishnah discusses bearing the shoulder, the commentary is explained in the times of the Mishnah, it was customary to walk with the funeral procession with the shoulder exposed. Today, although garments are still torn in mourning, the custom of exposing the shoulder is no longer practiced. And when the Mishnah discusses the mourner's meal, the Rav explains a mourner is forbidden to eat his own food at the first meal of the first day of his mourning period. Rather, it is provided by others. This first meal is known as the Surat Habra, literally the served meal, because the mourner does not use his own food, but is served by others. But like we read in the Mishnah, only the immediate relatives of the deceased tear their garments, bear their shoulders, or, and partake of the mourner's meal. People who are not obligated may not do these actions. Now, one who has lost, God forbid, a father, mother, brother, sister, son, daughter, or spouse is obligated to mourn. On ordinary days of the year, even more distant relatives, an uncle, aunt, or cousin, or any friends who wish to tear their clothing in mourning may do so. However, on Cholam Wed, which is a time of joy, only the relatives who are obligated to mourn are permitted to do this. And similarly, the usual custom was for the mourners to eat their first meal publicly with friends. On Cholam Wed, the mourners eat the meal alone in, privacy, in the privacy of their homes. This is how the Rav explains it again. The Halakha discusses this in Orachayim, chapter 547, the Halakha 8, and in other places. We are learning the Mishnah. Then, Mavrin el al nor do we join the mourner at the mourner's meal during Cholam Wed while we are seated on an overturned couch, as was the custom on a regular weekday. Rather, we do so while seated on an upright couch, for only the mourner sits on an overturned couch. In the times of the Mishnah, it was custom, I'm sorry, a in the times of the Mishnah, yes, it was customary for those eating with the mourners to eat on overturned beds or couches. On Cholamud, only the mourners themselves eat the first meal on overturned couches, but not those joining them, as the Rav explains. The Mishnah now introduces a law that applies at all times, not just on Cholamud. And Molichin Evel, one does not deliver food for the mourners' meal to a house of mourning, lo betavla, either on an elegant tray, velo ba'iskutla, or in a silver bowl, velo bekanon, or in a fancy basket, ela basalim, but only in plain baskets, so as not to embarrass people who cannot afford these expensive serving utensils. A sal is a basket made of peeled willow twigs. Like we learned earlier, friends and neighbors of the mourners would bring food for their first meal. If wealthy people would bring their offerings and elegant serving utensils, then poor people who are unable to do so might be ashamed. So to protect their honor, the sages forbid anyone from using such utensils for this occasion. Now this law is mentioned here to teach that even during Cholam Wed, when we try to avoid public displays of mourning, we do not bring food to the mourners in festive or elegant vessels out of consideration for the poor. The Mishnah now returns to the laws of Cholam Wed. After returning from a funeral with the mourners, the assembled people would stand in the street and one person would recite a special blessing for the mourners. This was called the mourners' blessing. The Mishnah says, We do not recite the mourners' blessing on Cholam Wed. At the mourner's meal, which was usually eaten in the street, a blessing concluded with, Blessed is he who consoles the mourners. That was recited. This blessing was also repeated during the Shiva when people who had not been present at the original blessing came to offer condolences. As the Gemara discusses in Masechik Tuvot, page 8b with Rashi, the Mishnah teaches that this blessing was not recited during Cholam Wed. The tool in Yoga Deah, chapter 379, writes that it is no longer the custom to recite this blessing even during the rest of the year. The Mishnah continues, But we do stand in a row and console the mourners after burial. Those present would file past the mourner and offer him condolences. The custom today is for the people to form parallel rows and for the mourners to pass between them to receive condolences. And we then immediately dismiss the public. Since the usual practice of reciting the mourner's blessing in the street does not take place on Cholam Wed, 
Those assembled do not accompany the mourners home. Rather, after offering their condolences, they are sent home immediately. And that is an of Mishnah Zayin. Mishnah Chet continues, On Yom Tov, any expression of grief is prohibited. On Cholam Wed, however, the sages permitted certain expressions of grief, but to preserve the spirit of the festival, they greatly restricted them. This Mishnah discusses how a funeral is conducted during Cholam Wed. And Minichinet Amita Ba'achov, we do not put down the bed in the street on Cholam Wed. The commentators explain in times of the Mishnah, as in some places today, corpses were not transported and buried in coffins, rather they were carried on a type of stretcher and then placed directly into the grave. That's why the Mishnah uses the language of Mitah. The reason is so as not to facilitate eulogies which are forbidden on Cholam Wed. It was the custom for eulogies to be set in the street on the way to the burial. On Cholam Wed, eulogies are forbidden. The Mishnah teaches that the bed in which the deceased is carried should not even be set down in the street on the way to the burial, since that could lead to eulogies being said. The next law is not specific to Cholam Wed, but applies at all times. The law shall nashim le'olam, nor are the beds of women ever put down on the street in their kavod out of respect for the deceased woman because blood may flow from them even after death and stain their shrouds, which would be an embarrassment. The Mishnah outlines which expressions of grief are permitted at a funeral on Cholam Wed. Nashim ba Mued me'anot, women may engage in the type of chanting called Inuy on Cholam Wed. Now the next Mishnah defines this as a funeral ch uh, chant chanted together by many women. Although eulogizing is forbidden, this type of expression of grief is permitted. These apl laws apply to men and women equally. The Mishnah speaks about women simply because it was common for them to engage in these expressions of mourning. So, Nashim ba Mued me'anot, women may engage in the type of chanting called Inuy an Cholam Mued, mitapechot, but they may not clap their hands in grief, meaning they may not strike one and against the other as a sign of sorrow, because this is a more intense expression of grief. Bishmel Omer, Bishmel says, however, those women who are near the bed, meaning direct in front of the deceased, may clap their hands. According to Rabbi Shmael, clapping the hands is an acceptable way of expressing grief during Cholam Wed, as long as, it, as long as it is confined to those women nearest the bed. And that is the Rabotai of today's Mishnah Yomi. Bauch Adonai Leolam. Amen. Amen.